Hi, I'm Tom Guerra, and here are today's questions. Uh, all three questions relate to production. And the first one is from Bill. You've produced all the Mambo Sons and your own solo albums. How does playing that role influence your playing and writing? Great question. Um, I think when I am writing, I'm conscious of how the end product, if you will, is going to uh, sound. So I try to incorporate um, enough variation uh, in the parts to make the song interesting. So kind of looking forward, you know, at the end song rather than just playing like one guitar throughout the whole song or, or one part, um, I try to chunk the song up and say, okay, what do I want people to really focus in on during this part of the song? So. Um, it definitely has influenced the way I play, and I, I've tried to play a little bit more economically and um, just to have a, a really decent, you know, good three-minute song, that type of thing. Next question is from Scott. Scott, thanks for uh, the second question you've sent in. Uh, what do you think the role of a producer should be? Um, I think a producer should first off not get in the way uh, of the song or the music or the artist. Um, there are some producers who have become very, very famous with a signature sound so you can immediately identify who the producer is when you hear the song. Um, it's worked well for them and they've uh, obviously been very, very successful with that. Um, however, I would prefer a producer to get the best out of the band, um, the best take out of the band, stay out of the way and sort of introduce minimal, um, I guess, gimmicks into the song, just so the song stands on its own. On its own. So hope that uh, answers your question. And uh, the next question is from David, who is your favorite record producer of all time? Um, again, I, I have many favorites. Um, some that come to mind uh, for the reasons that I just explained in the prior question uh, are Jack Douglas, for example. Um, whether it was his work with Aerosmith, early Aerosmith, uh, Cheap Trick, John Lennon, he got the best out of them for the take and for the track uh, without really stamping his uh, signature sound onto them. I think if Jack Douglas has a signature sound, it's quality um, versus a, an effect or a gimmick, that type of thing. So, love Jack. Almost had a chance to work with him uh, when I wrote with Kenny Aronson for the Yardbirds. Jack was going to produce that album. Unfortunately, the thing didn't happen, but uh, did have some uh, conversation with him at the beginning of that project. Um, the other obvious uh, producer, I think, is, is, the, is a genius, is George Martin, who, you know, took a very young and raw Beatle uh, band and, and really got the best out of them. Um, he did have a lot of influence in their music regarding the strings and the, the other orchestration. He did a lot of their orchestration as well. So um, he did have a huge influence, and he did actually, by doing that, sort of incorporate George Martin into the Beatles. But by that point, you really couldn't separate them. And uh, just was amazing what he did. And, and with some of the uh, engineers he worked with, um, you know, they were using four tracks in the beginning. So they were stacking four tracks up, but they were able to do it effectively. And and uh, come out with some incredible masterpieces that stand the test of time 50 some odd years later. So thanks for your questions. Keep them coming.